unbelievable because you're not staggered and I'm a foot away. Mm. Disgusting. Oh, really unbelievable, bro. On both of you? That's where you guys yeah. get. That's where you no, guys no, get. Like, both like of you. Like that. like that. That's where uh, you. No, why are you bagging me? I like that. I like that. I like that. My game is right. right there. Yo, how's it going, boys? I know it's been a very long time since we made the last video, especially the last video guide for one of the weapons builds, especially the Blonde Boss Fire Staff. I know it's been pretty famous and pretty infamous as well throughout all season three. And like I said, I am sorry I did not make a season three Blunder Boss Fire staff. It's just that I've been extremely, extremely busy with all season three related things. And also New World Champ. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. We're going to be diving into that in a little bit, but I will show you guys what that has been. And that is what it's been taking my whole time. But without any further ado, uh, this is a Season 4 Blunder Boss Fire Staff Full In-Death Guide. And not only Season 4, it's also Season 3 right now because we still have like what? Like 3 weeks of Season uh, of season 3. So yeah, we still have like 3 weeks of Season 3. And then the entirety of Season 4 Blunder Boss uh, recently got nerfed twice. I don't know if you heard of it or seen it, but I don't think that Blunder Boss is going to get nerfed anytime soon. And I also don't see that the Fire Staff is going to get nerfed anytime soon. So this guy will probably will still be viable all the way throughout Season 4. But in case that he changes, you guys can always stop by my stream. You guys know that I stream pretty much every single day. I'm going to show you guys the gear that we're going to be using. We're going to show you guys the rotation and then I'm going to show you guys some clips as well. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, hey, listen, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, all right? All right, uh, rotation things. Bye-bye. All right, and here we are. This is New World Champ. For those of you that don't know what New World Champ is, you guys are not familiar with it. This is a website that is all build-related PvP and PvE. This is created by myself and the community very good friends uh we have come out together with the best possible builds for pvp and pve so today we're going to be covering the fire stab blunder boss but if you guys want to see any other builds you guys can obviously uh go here for like i said for pvp and for pve you also have your builds but like i said today we're going to be focusing on the magical combination the gun mage which is fire stab and blunder boss the first build that we're going to be talking about, which is the main build that I've been using throughout all Season 3, and is the one that I will be using in Season 4, that one is called the Pest Gun Mage. And this is going to be the gear that we're going to be using with it. Um, we're going to be using 350 Intelligence, 200 Strength, and 100 Constitution for maximum possible damage. The reason why we're going 200 Strength and not 200 Con is because 200 Strength gives an insane amount of damage to the blunderbuss burst. On top of that, at 200 strength, you get 10% extra damage to slow enemies with both weapons, meaning the fire staff or the blunderbuss, if you do hit an enemy with a net shot, you can still uh, do damage with the fire staff for an extra 10% damage, thanks to that 200 strength threshold. We don't need more than 100 con, because all we want to do is as most damage as we possibly can. For the gear is going to be looking something like this. We're going to go for Plague Splitting Grenade, Fire Harnessing, and Freedom. The reason why we're going with Freedom is because since we're so low con, we probably going to die in a root or in a stun if we don't get out of it rather quickly. With four Freedom, like you guys see that I have here, I can get out of the shock waves, out of the vines, out of the screams, out of the net shots, all of those things that were otherwise kill me. I can get out of those relatively quickly. Now, uh, since we're low con, the other thing that might be a little bit of a problem might be the dots. But well, that is just a thing, right? Either you build vigor if you want to counter dots, or do you build freedom if you want to counter um, the other types you see. The thing is that with fire staff and blunder boss, you're usually going very close to the enemy. So it's going to be very often times where you're going to get hit by a vines or by a scream. Or just simply by like a shockwave, right? By a vault kick. And having those four freedom makes you get out of that situation really quickly. And uh, quickly recover as well. So yes, we're going to go with fire harnessing and freedom. Fire harnessing, of course, because we want, like I said, as much damage as we possibly can. 
on the room list we're gonna go with ignited on the gym i'm actually recommending as much opal as you guys can possibly put on your gear for season three and season four about 60 to 70 percent of the damage that it take that is taken in new world right now in pvp it's magical damage and now with the bulk caster being introduced in season four together with the ice gauntlet the void gauntlet being uh being moved from strike damage to void damage which is the void gauntlet artifact you have like pestilence like there's so much magical damage that honestly the best thing for you to do right now is go full opal not even honestly not even a ruby boys there, there's no need for it because you know you have like lightning damage you have void damage you have fire damage you have ice damage nature damage and, and the life staff that is coming soon you're gonna see life staff bow builds like it's crazy out there the amount of builds and amount of magical damage that you can receive the freaking great axe with void damage right which is it's it's crazy so yes opal pretty much on all of the gear and also on the accessories if you can on the chest piece we're gonna go with accelerating flamethrower freedom and refreshing we're going to go on the gloss with a sauce and headshot fire harnessing and freedom the attuned leather pants uh, also if you guys go into new world champ and this is your first time if you see the items that are yellow these are items that are crafted or purchased at the marketplace right these are just regular crafted or bo uh e items the red items are of course the artifacts and the purple items are the named items because because usually you find the named items as purple so if you were to hover on top of them it will tell you where to get them from for example the coleslaw law shoes right here Inied or the kion for 3.5k dense Indian material for the attuned leather pants you get this on the elysian wild main story reward uh for the pestilence you get it on the pvp track level 50 for the corrupt progenitor amulet name npcs in shattered mountain for the heavy earring scylla or the kiln crowd for 3500 dense lazarus material for the mastermind it's coming soon we don't really know where this ring is coming from and we don't even need, we don't even know if it is coming in season four altogether in case that it's not coming in season four because we should have that information pretty soon then i would just simply change the mastermind to a different ring which i'm gonna get there in a second so anyways on the chest piece we have accelerating flamethrower freedom refreshing on the glove we have net shot fire harnessing and freedom on the attuned leather pants we're gonna put shirking energy this is very very strong on the coast law shoes we're gonna put uh freedom it comes with fire harnessing and refreshing on the pestilence we're going to be using a gem socket and we're going to put a ruby ignited in there uh for those of you that don't know how to put a gem socket on the artifacts all you have to do is go to your faction vendor on the level three rank of your faction vendor buy the socket it's like a gem setting kind of thing and then take that to the kiln coffee maker and there is how you add the gem socket to the artifacts now have in mind there are some artifacts that cannot have a gem sucking in them and those are the life taker the abyss inferno and ball caster okay those are four artifacts that not cannot have gems in them so any other artifact you can put a gem in it no problem if i missed any please let me know in the section down below in the comments uh probably missed any i don't think i did but uh, anyways on the fire staff and powering fireball a brand new perk that has become pretty much every mage's favorite in season three it's alacratious punishment because there's so much haste in your world every single class has haste freaking fire staff has haste bow has haste flails have an insane amount of haste i'm sure you guys seen all of the freaking flash flails running around great axe has haste uh, uh blonde the buzz ice gauntlet rapier you name it pretty much every weapon in the game has haste and alacration's punishment got recently buffed to 20 percent damage against players that have a haste and the great thing about that 20 percent alacration's punishment damage is that it does not add up to the maximum empowering cap of 50 percent so that is base damage increase which it means that you will never be over cap with empowerment uh talking about over cap with empowerment this entire bill sits usually roughly around 44 percent empowerment meaning that you don't have to worry about being a max in power you will always pretty much be doing 
maximum damage. And the new perk with the recent changes that happened recently with the patch 3.0.3. .3, that play crits now can happen at any HP that the enemy has. It no longer has to be below 50%. And a new addition that they did to the anti-heals. Meaning that before, if you were to hit somebody with play crits or any anti-healing in general, only that person heals were affected, right? And heals coming to that person. Meaning, if you were to anti-heal target A, if target B was a healer and target B was to heal target A, the heals will be reduced. Why? Because target A had the disease. But if target B, the healer, if target B, the healer had the diseased and they were to heal themselves, then they will be healing reduced. But if they were to heal somebody that did not have the disease, then the healer will proceed to heal that person for maximum full heals, even though the healer was diseased, right? Because it was not affecting the other people. But now there has been new changes to anti-heal, meaning that if you disease somebody, not only their heals to themselves are reduced, but also the heals that are leaving them. Meaning that anti-heals for healers, like against healer, is now better than it has ever been before. Because heals to themselves are greatly reduced. And also heals to other people are also reduced. And when you combine Pestilence, which is 15% anti-heal after 3 seconds, of course, because it takes 3 seconds to get the 3 stacks. On top of that, with play crits, we meaning, that means that you can apply 40% anti-healing on anybody on a spam of 3 seconds or less, right? What, are, what do I say less? Well, the reason that I say less is because we also have playing splitting grenades, which is another 16%. So if you were to hit an enemy with plague splitting grenade, right? You will not only apply the 16% anti-heal, right? 16%. You will also apply 5% from the Pestilence. And I know you'll be like, well, Trick, but Splitting Grenades is 3 Explosion. Yes, but the thing is that Blighted, it has a 1 second cooldown. Meaning that you cannot apply 3 stacks of Anti-Heal back to back to back. It has to be 1 stack, 2 stacks, 3 stacks, right? So that's why I was saying that it takes 3 seconds for you to apply that. But anyways, Blake Splitting Grenade is 16%. Plus 5%, that is 21%. If, if those grenades were to crit, immediately an extra 26%, right? So 21% or 22%, no, 21% plus 26%, we're talking about 47% anti-heal, which is almost the maximum anti-heal. And this is why play crits, it's so crazy powerful in this new meta. And if you are a healer or a class that heals a lot or you play with a healer friend, then the best new perk that he has be becoming, honestly, the best thing overall is going to be invigorated. If you have like 150 or 200 constitution and you use shirking heals and you used to have shirking heal and health, get rid of health. Get rid of health and put on invigorated in there because invigorated is mega powerful, reducing all of the anti heals by up to 60%. Reducing the exhaust by 60%. The recent nerf to net shot, which it took it from 8 seconds to 4 seconds. If you were to have 4 invigorated, that 4 second exhaust goes down to 1.6 second, which is crazy unbelievable. Imagine getting net shot and it only lasted 1.7 second exhaust. So yes, you get rid of anti heals, which is extremely powerful nowadays because potions and everything. Imagine that the fight starts. And the mage or whoever hits you with a critical as soon as the fight starts. And you want to drink a potion? Guess what? That potion is already reduced by over 26% probably. You know, because that's just how good anti-healings are. But if you have like 4 invigorated... And by the way, usually the anti-heals for every class and weapon... It range anywhere from like uh, 4 seconds to 8 seconds. 8 seconds being the max. The average is about 6 seconds. Meaning that if you were to have 60% invigorated... That 6 second is going to last very little. It's going to last, I don't know, I don't do math in public, but 60% of 6 second, it's no more than 2 seconds and something, right? Which is way better than 6 seconds if you are a class that is heal dependent. If you are like a bruiser, invigorated is now better than ever before. Because while you're on top of the clumps, 
There's going to be a lot of anti-heals from all the bruisers, but mages, void gauntlets, uh, blunderbuss, etc. And you want to be standing on top of those sacred grounds. And the last thing that you want to have is a bunch of diseases on you, making that sacred ground completely, completely irrelevant. So you having a bunch of invigorated for max is all you can have. It will make every single one of those not only anti-heals, but anti-heals, exhaust, weakens, and rent. The most important debuff that this game has to not only execute any single player but also to kill clumps and healers and, and bruisers right rents is crazy powerful to take down the bruisers and anybody in general weaken is what bruisers don't do damage if they're weakened and who apply weakens maelstroms apply weakens right so there is weakens being used in the middle of the clump you want to get rid of those weakens as soon as you can and like i said heals you want to have as much heal as you possibly can and that is why Invigorated has become so goddamn popular together with the new rise of play crits. Moving on, on the amulet, we have the Corrupt Progenitor. You get this one from the name NPCs in Shadow Mountain. In Shadow Mountain, if you go to like Merc to do like a Merc or Mines Elite Train, you will probably end up getting it and you haven't even noticed. I decided to put Stamina Recovery on this bad boy. Refresh and Recovery and Stamina Recovery. I, I actually like it a lot. Because that means that if I drop below 50% and I have already used my cooldown on one weapon. Oh, by the way, it also works on one weapon. It does not work on both weapons at the same time. Meaning that if you have all of the cooldowns on the Blunderbuss and you have the Fire Stab at the moment. And you drop below 50%, the cooldowns for the Blunderbuss will not be touched. It only affects the weapon that you have out at the moment. So, but for a lot of times, if you guys see my playstyle while I'm streaming... Usually in the arenas or, uh, you know, anywhere we are, I like to go in. I like to do my combo. I like to draw, execute the enemy. And if I don't execute the enemy because the enemy was, uh, you know, a good player, sometimes I, I do get punished by my reckless and aggressive playstyle. And by dropping below 50%, not only gives me all of the cooldowns of the blunderbuss back, because usually that's how I do my combo, but it will also give me my stamina back, meaning that it, it, it can make me come back into the fight so so fast so quick right usually my combo is i do a burnout into a fireball if i haven't used fireball if i use fireball from you know before the burnout then it's fireball followed by a burnout roll into a uh, shrine blast a basic attack shrine blast roll basic attack net shot if i uh, haven't used the second bullet and if i were to drop below 50 percent, because usually i'm between three players a lot then i used to uh, i get that stamina back i get the cooldowns back another net shot another explain grenades another shrine no blast so yeah refresh and recovery is very very nice if you use a lot of abilities on your weapons on the ring we're going to be using mastermind of course this ring is perfect for this build for season four because most of our damage is just abilities about 80 percent of our damage is abilities the other 20% is basic attacks, either light attacks, heavy attacks, or blunderbuss basic attacks. But buffing that 80% of our damage, 13%, even though that it reduces our basic attack damage to, uh, by 25%, it is still is a good trade-off. Uh, simply because, like I said, most of our damage comes from abilities, flamethrower, fireball, shrine blast, uh, burnout, splitting grenades, net shot, you name it. If Mastermind was not to come in season four then the ring that i recommend for this play style in season four would be invigorated hardy and fire damage which it will be the champion's ring in season four you can get the champion ring and you will be able to change keen awareness to any of the damage of your liking which is very very good heavy earring you can use it over here there is another earring that instead of being constitution it gives you intelligence i forgot the name of that earring but you could also use that utilize that one if you like uh for the builds we're going to be using our traditional flamethrower fireball into burnout abilities right here this is our base damage right uh fireball is a great filler and flamethrower is the best filler for fire staff also fireball since we're going to be having fireball on the weapon and we also have a bunch of ignited and fire damage and fire harnessing that fireball does hit quite hard if you do end up creating an enemy that is above 50% health. For the Blunderbuss, we have several builds. We have the Double Down build. This is the build that you would, you would utilize 
if you're not too focused on single target this is more like an aoe approach because you can use two grenades you can use two net shot you can use two shrapnel blast uh this is for a more um utility kind of approach because you get double anti-heal and also double aoe with the grenades but you will be missing a lot on that single target damage the next one that i recommend over here will be a single target damage build with the blast shot if this is what you enjoy to play if you enjoy to play with a blast shot and not the splitting grenade then all you have to do is get rid of that splitting grenade right here and probably put blast shot it's completely up to you and the build that i play which is the one that i like the most which is the one that i play all the freaking time it is my containment with maximum damage on unload the splitting grenade in uh, last chance down here and in case uh, that you guys are watching my website my stream is always down here if you guys uh will have any question about this build so this is my full bursting damage with a pest gun mage right if you want maximum damage with the blunder boss and the fire staff this will be the build right here now i have another build that i also played and this build i utilize it for 1v1s or tournaments or duel in case that i'm fighting event against a very good player the other counterpart to this build it is the safe approach this is the full burst of full glass cannon maximum damage it is extremely fun build to play the safer approach if we go to fire staff will be the shuriken heal gun mage now the shuriken heal gun mage it does changes a little bit as you guys can see we're now going to go with 350 intelligence 200 calm 25 focus you're going to have like 20 something more points you can go ahead and put those points into intelligence there's no point in putting it into anything else and now the build does look a little bit different here as you guys can see we're going to be using plague splinter grenade shaking heels and invigorated like i was uh, mentioning you guys earlier we're going to be using the emperor shows uh chest piece right here that comes with refreshing and health so we're just slapping a shaking healing there uh because again we're gonna go for a shaking heal approach uh, this one you get it from N3 Dynasty or you get it at the kiln for 3500 apiece. Then on the gloves, we're going to go for Exhausted Net Shot, Shirking Heels, and Invigorated. On the pants, we're going to go for the Hurdy Pants. This Hardy Pants, you get it in Inid as well. Inid is great, Chad. <laughs> it's amazing. Anyways, on the pants, these pants come with Shirking Energy and Hell. So I just slapped Shirking Heel in there. We're going to be using the Tumblr, the Tumblr shoes, which uh, we're going to be slapping Shirking Heels there as well. We're going to be using the, the exact same blunderbuss. We're going to be using the exact same fire staff. But instead of using the, uh, the, the, the the accessories that we used before, we're now going to be using Onk with a stamina recovery. Onk with stamina recovery, it is phenomenal. Especially if you're using a full set of Shirk and Heal and Healthy Toes as well. Onk still is pretty, pretty good. It's not a bad accessory. I, can, I still recommend it. And even though the Shuriken Heal got nerfed to 10 seconds, listen, I've been using Shuriken Heal all the way, all the way from Season 1, right? I've been using Shuriken Heal when nobody thought Shuriken Heal was a thing. I've been using Shuriken Heal when everybody thought it was a meme. Shuriken Heal is always nice. If you do like that solo play style and that extra health potion every 10 seconds, go for it. It still is very useful for what it's intended to, to be. I know it's not as powerful as it used to be, not even close, but it still is, it still is good as intended. And if you are a person that managed to not get hit a lot, if you are using Shuriken Heal, then whenever you get hit, you, you're going to use Shuriken Heal and get that HP quickly back. Anyways, once more, we're going to be using Ignited Opal in all of our gear. For the ring, like I showed you guys, we're going to be using the Champion's Ring with Hardy, Invigorated Punishment, and Fire Damage. On the earring, we're going to be using Regenerating, Healthy Tulls, and Refreshing Tulls. And then if you ask me, well, Trey Warren, and you're using the earring that gives you this perk, it's because unfortunately with the the, mag the magnifiers that we already put on this bill, we cannot afford to put another magnifier because you guys know how magnify is. So one, two, three, four, five magnifies the most that this bill allows us to play. For the build, it's going to look exactly the same as the other one. You know, the ability trees, nothing changes right here a lot. For the hard rune, you can use whatever you want. You can use Star Wars hard rune because Star Wars hard rune is affected. Uh, you know, it, 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 it helps you heal a lot more. But anyways, now that we are done with the gear, I'm going to quickly show you guys a quick rotation how this build is played. 
in both season three and season four and i'm gonna play some clips after that and i hope you like i hope you guys like it see you guys yeah see you guys in a second and we're back i'm gonna show you guys now their rotations and the combo for this build there's like a couple of them it's like four or five and uh and yeah here we go the first one that i usually do in arenas if like whenever the enemy is like on the other side of the bridge or like behind the pillar usually what i do is i start with a fireball right then i do a roll before a burn now i go into a burn now into a roll splitting grenade basic attack shrapnel blast basic attack net shots and you know re-exit the combat so once again it was a fireball followed by a burnout into a splitting grenade a roll basic attack shrapnel blast basic attack net shot once again uh i'm gonna repeat it this is for whenever the enemy is behind a pillar or for whenever the enemy is on the other side of the bridge and you want to initiate the battle <clears throat> with that combination so it will be a fireball a roll before the burnout then you go in there swap weapons to the blood of boss basic attack basic attack just like that fireball into burnout into splitting grenades into shrapnel blast into net shot and obviously uh before you do your your your, your shrapnel blast you're going to do a basic attack and before you do the net shot, you're going to do a basic attack. You don't want to do a basic attack um, before splitting grenade because you usually mess up your combo uh, a little bit. It's not as preferred method anymore. So once again, it's going to be fireball into a roll, into a burnout, right? Into a roll weapon swap, basic attack, shrapnel blast, basic attack, net shot, and your auto stamina, I mean, your full stamina out of the fight. So that is the one combo whenever the enemy is behind an obstacle. Now, let's say that you are doing somebody or you are face to face with the enemy and you guys are looking at each other, right? There's no, no hidden obstacles. You guys are going at it. The first thing that I like to do as soon as the fight starts is um, land a net shot. So the first thing that you want to do is land a net shot. And now after the net shot, you will dictate the battle. So it will be a net shot into a base, possibly a basic attack, heavy attack with a fire staff. Or if they roll, then you can do like a light attack fireball. And then after they do that, after they force that one roll or maybe two rolls, you will then go in with a burnout, splitting grenades, shrapnel blast. So let's say the fight start, that is the dummy right there, right? Let's call that dummy early. So you had early right there, the fight start, he's uh, missing with the bow shot. Uh, you hit him with a net shot. He probably wants to roll, then you hit him with a fireball. If you roll the fireball, or even if it connected, then go in with a burnout, the roll swap into basic attack, basic attack, and then you have to roll away if you kill them if you don't kill them then you can still punish with a flamethrower right like you don't need to run away like i'm showing the combos where like it will stop but if the enemy at this point is slow or you know relatively like running away then you will not retreat you will continue with the flamethrower that goes for both the builds right the first one that i was showing you with a fireball into a burnout right roll weapon swap splitting grenade basic attack shrapnel blast basic and you can come in with the fire with a flamethrower now that the enemy's net shot it and they're taking 10 percent more damage from your flamethrower and any, and everything else you don't need to do the net shot backwards you can do it forward the thing is that there is a delay right if you want to do the net shot and not go backwards then you need to be on an animation lockdown which is basic attack net shot do you see how long that was instead if you don't do it walking forward and you can do basic attack net shot on a split second and then roll forward with the flamethrower because at that moment you will still be full stamina you're gonna roll forward to consume stamina from your fire staff that way the oppo will hit so once more here is the full damaging combo if you were to kill the enemy and not run away something like this and then you punish them with the flamethrower or you retreat as you see fit all right so those are the two main combos that is the combo or behind a wall then combo whenever you're fighting somebody now the there are little tiny combos that you will find in uh this combo is for example let's say that you're fighting an enemy like a healer or whatever and obviously you do the net shot and you bait their stamina or it's, let's say that they're not even you're not even fighting them and you notice that they're like at 20 10 or even out of stamina if you notice that an enemy is within your burnout reach if an enemy it is within your burnout reach and you notice that they are out of stamina immediately hit them with a net shot roll into a burnout closing now that they are out of stamina net shot it what you will proceed to do is do a splitting grenade roll basic attack shrapnel blast okay that is to you 
that is for you to completely eradicate that enemy. Destroy. If anybody that is in light gear or medium gear, it will probably get 100 to 0 or 100 to like 10, 20%. If they get hit by the net shot, they splitting grenade, the basic attack, and the freaking shrapnel blast. It, it makes no sense, right? It, it's, it's, it's just a very deadly combo. So let's say that is the enemy that is out of stamina. You just notice. Let's say that you notice that he was out of stamina. Or let's say that he ran out of stamina as soon as you're done with that burnout. He was That was the last roll, right? So you hit him with that burnout. He rolled his out of stamina. Then you're going to hit him. You're going to hit him with that net shot. You're going to close in. Basic attack. Shrino Blast for the combo, right? That is pretty, pretty good. Pretty juicy. That is the one that I would use if the enemy was to be out of stamina to guarantee to guarantee those skills. Uh, other than that, it's, it's pretty much it, right? Obviously... Or little combos without the full rotation. Let's say the enemy is in front of you, right? And you're doing this. And then all of a sudden, the enemy decides to do a shockwave. Which is a very, very easy ability to dodge, right? You're flaming with a flamethrower. He does a shockwave. Then you will do this. Basic attack. And you will do a little full combo right there. Sometimes you can only do basic attack shrapnel blast. Because they will roll as soon as they're done with a the shockwave animation. But if they're not done, if they're not, if they don't have stamina, and let's say that you didn't have your splitting grenade on cooldown, right? And you were flamethrowing the enemy, and all of a sudden he does the slow ability, you can always uh, slow, uh, roll the slow ability and hit him with a very nice combo, and then follow that with a fireball, or then close in with a burnout. Like, it's very dynamic build, right? It has a lot of ins, a lot of outs, that you can dictate when to make your moves. He has a very nice burst, and that's pretty much it. Um, another combo that you can use with the hard runes, right? You can use the detonate hard rune if you want. And that will use... The way that you use detonate hard rune, by the way, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to use it now because... Uh, actually, I will use it. Let me show you guys first. The shrapnel blast. I mean, the cannon blast. For the cannon blast, you could do something like a splitting grenade. Basic attack shrapnel blast. Cannon blast. A basic attack net shot. Right? That is, like, that is for like the cannon blast. Um, now, I'm going to show you guys how you will look for the detonate one. I'm going to cut here and continue once I have my Detonate hard rune fully charged. All right, and we are back. So the Detonate can be used in two manners, right? One will be to be used in clumps whenever you see a big juicy clump or whenever you see the back lines that has a couple of archers and healers and they're like clump up right next to each other, right? You could use the Detonate burnout into that clump. Now, how do you use that Detonate burnout? The way that you use that Detonate burnout is you will proc Detonate, then do one step roll into a burnout and then both of them will explode at the same time whenever you hit the clump right now let's say that you are not fighting a clump you're fighting a single target person and remember what i was saying let's say that that single target person is within one burnout reach and he's out of stamina so you're going to hit him with that nature you're going to detonate do the roll then into a burnout into boom right everything explodes at the same time you do massive damage that person will one 100% die. Uh, for the clump, it's pretty much the same similar thing. I'm going to go ahead and recover my hard room right here in a second. And I will see you guys to show you how it's done in clumps. All right. So if clump is what you are looking for and not that single target enemy. So simply what you can do is try not to use a fireball before you go in or some shit like that. Simply because the moment that they get hit by a fireball, everybody's just going to go like... And everybody's just going to scatter, right? So don't do the fireball. Save it probably for later. So once again, that is the unsuspected clump right there. Looking at that beautiful purple flag. So you come in with a detonate. You're going to do the roll into a burnout. Bra! Everything explodes. Fireball, basic attacks, shrapnel blasters. Bada bing, bada boom. Run away, jump inside of the freaking tent. And you will be safe, right? Anyways, that's it. That's pretty much it for the combos. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like I said, don't forget to hit us with a like and with a sub, please. We're going to be coming back onto the YouTube because we're pretty much done with New World Champ. All it requires now is a little bit of maintenance here and there. Uh, New World Champ link is going to be down below. And um, I'll see you guys out there. Bye-bye. Here we go. Bring grenade. This is Trash on the Blast. This is that next shot. Here we go. Jakia. Who's Jakia? Right there. What is that? Sword and Shield Spear. He's gonna do Leaping Strike. Here you go. Roll backward. Hit him with a net shot. Saddle Stamina. Okay. Yo, 
got one more roll. He's had all stamina. Man, that guy stole the duel from Smoke. Titan, go level up. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do it one more time and then we got a uh, transmog review chat. Today we're doing transmog reviews. Huge. Whoa, hell no. Oh, he's running shirking heels too. And he's medium. Oh my god, Tumble Shoes gave him his full health, Jack. Man, I did my combo and Tumble Shoes healed him for like a million health. Oh, again, what the fuck? Unfortunate turn to in. Had to do heavy attacks and light attacks and shit. Okay, last duel, last duel, last duel. Last duel, last duel, last duel. Yo, trick. What up? I am gonna head out. Whenever I get a level to count, whether it's this one or another one, I'll let you know. Okay, baby. I'm gonna go back. I cannot right, wait in. <laughs> wait, do you want me to what be region have you been playing lately? Ready for more? Yes, I am ready for more. Okay. I'm cheering for the blue! 